Well, hey, geometry. We are in March, first week, and we are in our last uh, week of similarity. Feels like we just got here. Let's see. So we did proportion. Oh, wow. Well, we've been here for two weeks, and this is our third week. Okay, so we're going to talk about scale, model, and drawings. And um, I'm a little bummed because, as you can see, this is due tomorrow. And right now, if it's 9.44 p.m., and it looks like nine people are going to get zeros. I don't understand why people didn't hear me. You know, we even we went to this assignment on Friday or Thursday, one of those days. Oh. February 24th. So this was assigned on Thursday and we talked about it, went to it, and then people went home and they didn't do it. So I really want you guys to, in addition to other good stuff that you're doing, because we're getting better at looking at the textbook, but I still think that you guys as honor students have to get better at hearing what your teacher says and writing it down in your planner so you don't forget it. <clears throat> so I would love it if I saw everyone with a planner out on their desk going forward. I would even tell me that. You just go ahead right now and say, mom, dad, I need a planner. Mr. Fields said, I need a planner. I'm forgetting stuff he says. Uh, now let's, let's move forward. <clears throat> so scale drawings and models. This is, uh, a way that we can actually use similarity. There's a lot of ways, but it's a good way, you know, scale models. That's so we have, when we have to make something, it's really expensive. So we make a little model of it. And then uh, if we think it's good, then we can make the real thing, you know, and save, save some money instead of having to create the, the real thing over and over again. So, a map is a good example of a scaled drawing. And okay, so find the actual distance between Nashville and Chattanooga. In order to do that, we need to know the scale. And so it's 0 0.4 inches is 40 miles. And then we also need to know where Nashville and Chattanooga are. So here's Chattanooga. Is Nashville. So what we'd have to do is actually measure this distance. See, it says use a ruler. So <clears throat> let's just uh, take a guess here for this. We'll use rulers in class with some real maps and things. But let's say that this is um, this is two inches. So if that is the case. I use my ruler and find that this is two inches on the map. Then I can set up a proportion to find the actual distance. So uh, we can do map, or we can do map inches over map miles is equal to actual inches over actual miles. So map inches is two. Oh. Sorry, the map inches over map. Map inches is two. And the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I mean to say 0 0.4. And the map miles is 40. So that is that key there. And then the actual inches is two. The actual miles is what we want to know. Then you just cross multiply. So sorry, I said that a little confusing. But this side comes from the key, and this guy side comes from the measuring. Measuring. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. I thought I was on my annotation, but I'm. Okay, so scale factors. So we talked about scale factors. It's it's the ratio. Um, scale model. This is Alejandro's history class made a scale model of the Alamo that is three feet tall. The actual height of the building is 33 feet, six inches, or 33.5 
feet, right? What is the scale? What is the scale of the model? So then we would just want to do um, three over thirty three point five. So we want to <clears throat> factor of a model is smaller than the original object between zero and one. The scale factor for a model that is larger would be greater than one. So if this model is three feet tall, <clears throat> the scale of the model is going to be the model's uh, height <clears throat> over the actual height. Fo following this study tip here. How many times as tall as the actual building is the model? So in order to do that, we could take the 33.5 and divide it by three. And so it's about 11 times, right? Questions about that? Put in the organizer. Real world example three, construct models. Sonia is making a scale drawing of her room of an eight by five by 11 inch sheet of paper. Oh, okay. If her room is 14 feet by 12 feet, find an appropriate scale for the drawing and determine the dimensions of the room. All right, so let's, the actual is one inch to one inch to 60 feet is the appropriate scale. So for every inch, model since 630 feet divided by 11 inches is 57.3 so how do they get that there's no oh that is no more than 11 inches tall so then they divided by 11 and they got 57.3 so they said let's uh, make that about, that's about 60. So it's, all right. So let's see, 8.5, uh, this is interesting. Okay, so we wanna put 14 feet by 12 feet on the, on the paper here. So let me just pause the video for a second. All right, then took a few minutes to think about it. And I don't really think that example really helped me a whole lot, but as I was thinking about it, you know, these numbers are near to each other, unlike the 630 and 11. But think about it this way if every inch was equal to every foot, then our paper would be too small because we have an 8.5 and this is 14 and 12. So both those are bigger than 8.5. So our room would go off the paper. We need a 14 by 12 paper. But what about this? What if we just made every inch two feet? Now, that means that, uh, 8.5, if we multiply that by two, that's like 17, you know? So, where can I get that? 8.5 times two is 17. And then 11 times two is 22. So now we have a scale that lets us fit a 17 by 22 foot room. And our room is within those parameters, it's 14 by 12. So I think an appropriate scale would just be one inch is equal to two feet. And then so you can draw a room, it will fit on the paper. So that, you know, just think about uh, the scale that you can use to fit the parameters that you have. In the, their example, they didn't want the model to be taller than 11 inches. So they divided by 11. In the guided practice question, our constraints are not a model's height, but a piece of paper. So we need to fit this room drawing on the piece of paper. 
So the scale, has, we can just change the scale so that it fits. That's a good question then. All right, so go ahead and uh, <clears throat> look at this practice and problem solving section because you know that Oklahoma is going to end up on the test, you know, uh, or maybe this, maybe this map of Frankfurt, Kentucky, maybe Florida. We'll see. Lots of great questions here. But in addition to that, okay, now originally I had put IXL P11 to uh, 15, but see, but now we're going to put CCON Academy assignments. Okay. For homework. And we'll just say recommend recommended practice. Did I not spell that right? There, thank you, Google. All right. So we're switching to Khan Academy this week, and I hope that everyone completes all of the assignments by Wednesday. Uh, and if you want to do the IXL as well, then you can, but you don't have to. So I know that many of you will hear that and say, well, then I'm not going to, that's fine. But we're doing the, um, now where is it? Signed. Oh, within the, okay, all time. So you see similarity quiz three, similarity unit test, and then also some right triangle trigonometry uh, space practice as well. All right, so that, that's the homework in addition to the textbook questions. And I will see you in class. Bye, everyone.